We are ready to go live here as well. So thank you again for joining. Um, and thank you everybody watching on Facebook Live as well. Um, I have um, our usual guests, Billy, Dave, Farouk, and Adil here joining us. I appreciate it. Um, and we're trending towards the last few weeks of the election. I mean, it's uh, 24 days to go now. Counting, yes, countdown. Um, I, first of all, I really want to thank the volunteers. It's been such a phenomenal um, journey for me throughout. Um, just looking at what all the volunteers have been doing and, and really become leaders, um, I would say. A lot of uh, my volunteers that are now in high school or college were part of my campaign in 2016 and they've really grown up with the campaign. Um, they're leading the charter now. A lot of kids that, you know, high school students that I have mentored even in the last couple of years have become, honestly, become leaders in what they're doing on social media. People ask me, your social media is great. Who's doing running that? Well, it's a team of high school and college students that are running that. So I really appreciate all the hard work they're doing. Um, we've written 6,000 handwritten postcards. Um, that's a lot of handwritten postcards that are going out to voters. I really appreciate that. Um, we've been um, dropping literature. More than 8,000 has been dropped. Um, the farmer's market, um, I've had my volunteers join me. I've been there and so many of you have dropped by um, phone calls. Um, I think we're really starting to build up the phone banking now. Um, and uh, we've had done maybe made about um, 2,500 or so, but again, all the volunteers that have come together. So for me, this is a win. This is a win that so many people are part of my journey. This is not my campaign. This is our campaign and, and all the hard work we've put in. We've, we all learn on the job. We all learn how to improve things. And so just want to start this with really thanking everybody, all your support in every possible way, way that you've supported me. And then I, we are the one campaign that has probably raised the most money from multiple individuals. So um, my financial person probably has the hardest time because she has to enter a lot of line items, um, but that's what we've seen. There are so many people everywhere from whether it's $5 um, donation to $25 to $100, each one means a lot to me. Uh, when you decide to put your money towards this campaign, this is this is your campaign. So I just want to really, I am humbled very much. Every time I run, um, I'm humbled and I'm even more humbled with the support that I've gotten. So just wanted to start my Sunday with being grateful and thanking everybody who's done so much for this campaign. Um, like I said, we're trending towards the last three weeks now. So you're probably getting mailers. Um, interesting mailers, some of them in, in the mail as well. Um, I've always believed in a very positive campaigning um, and San Ramon generally, our voters like positive campaigning and most campaigns we've never done hit pieces on people. We've always kept it positive. That, that kind of tells you the maturity of the candidate as well. And so if there are mailers coming out there, there are people saying things, verify them. Um, see where the funding is coming from, who, you know, um, some campaigns are being funded by um, special interests, uh, which is not a great thing for any campaign because then you owe back to those special interests. And uh, I would just say, do your homework. There are, um, government is very transparent. If you go on our city's website, the city clerk's website, you can really go and look up every candidate's FPPC um, that we file, um, the campaign um, finance um, is a very important part of campaigning because we raise money and we spend that money and each and every candidate files it. Um, during the last, um, um, I, I believe after September 8th, anybody who gets more than $1,000 um, or more uh, from an individual um, or a PAC has to file what we call a 497. Uh, which is a big sum of money that's been contributed to the campaign. Um, and you have to file that with, within 24 hours of receiving that. So I know a lot of people are not familiar with these things. I, you know, I do encourage you as you do your homework on your candidates, as you look at you know, how they're being funded, um, look, at these, look at these numbers, um, they're important. Um, and point to you know, who's funding who and you know, 
Why is there special interest? The other question I've been asked, what is the role of a mayor, right? Um, interestingly, it was also from a Bo Boy Scouts meeting I had on Friday. Uh, and um, the role of the mayor for a lot of is, one, make sure you work well with the council. Any decision on city council gets made with a majority vote, <clears throat> whether it's three, two, whether it's four, one, or whether it's five, oh. And the mayor's job is critical in making sure that the council is able to talk about their case, argue their case, and also make sure that we work together for the betterment of the community. It is, you're not, you know, a single vote. If you don't know how to work well with people, and if you don't know how to listen, um, it's not going to help you being a mayor because listening is, and I continue to tell leaders, you know, people when they ask me, what is leadership? And for me, the most important quality is listening first and then making a decision based on, based on that. A lot of, you know, uh, people will think that a leader is somebody who will just come there, command the room, um, talk what they want and then leave. No, that's not leadership. And that's especially not leadership here in, um, in our councils. Um, the mayor is the figurehead, if you will, and the face of the council and the face of the community. So the mayor goes out there, um, represents the community, meets with the businesses, uh, makes sure that, you know, represents council on not only um, local events, but regional events, and then really appoints council members to represent the city on all the different boards and uh, committees um, uh, that are liaison, as liaisons to different boards and committees and commissions as well. Uh, and then very important part is as well establishing a, a relationship with our commissioners um, and our committee members as well, uh, because our commissioners and our committee members are appointed by the council um, to be the extended um, eyes and ears and advisory board of the council and any input we get from the committees commissions, we take them very seriously. So being a mayor is a lot about building relationships for folks that are appointed on our committee's commissions, as well as making sure that the council and all the council members feel they're heard, um, they're respected. And when we make these decisions um, every two weeks uh, during our council meetings, um, it's, you know, um, I like to call it, you hold the gavel, but really the gavel is there to make sure that we, uh, we are able to hold these meetings, we're able to run these meetings effectively as a mayor. Um, and so um, mayors are representatives, first and foremost. Uh, when you look at an org chart, chart of an organization, the city, the residents of San Ramon are sit on, on top, right? They're the, the first layer of that organization. The city council then reports to the residents of San Ramon. And then the city council appoints your city manager and um, your uh, city manager and the city attorney. And so, and then the city manager is who is, you know, the uh, basically the administrative arm of the council is the one who makes sure that they, he runs um, the day-to-day -day operations of the city based on what the priorities of the council are, based on how we voted on these open meetings um, where, where everybody can give public comment uh, where everybody can talk about what, what matters to them. And that's when the council listens and, uh, that is probably the most effective way of you engaging with your council as well to come to city meetings. And these days it's easy. There are Zoom meetings, they're online. All you have to do is log in. You have three minutes for public comment and really share with the council what your concerns are and what do you love about San Ramon as well. I, I We all live here because we love the city. We love the city because over the years we've um, really um, built a city which is welcoming uh, which people connect with. And as one of the council members say, San Ramon was all, not always one of the top places to live, not always the best city, but it has happened year after year with very thoughtful planning. Um, so when, you know, <clears throat> when people start putting out things that the council will ruin the city and things like that, the council has worked hard and we worked hard, you know, um, we've got competing priorities all the time. Um, uh, you know, development always becomes a hot topic issue. Um, and one of the things which I would direct you again to our city uh, website, uh, when we talk about the RENA numbers, 
uh, RENA numbers are the numbers which we have allocation because California is so short on housing. Who doesn't talk about California not being affordable, right? And that's because we don't have housing. And so cities have um, allocations um, called RENA numbers, which you, we have to meet as part of our state mandate, as part of our um, regional mandates. Um, now, we are going through a RENA cycle right now as we speak, and cities are negotiating that RENA cycle. Um, in the first phase, San Ramon was given almost um, 40, 4,500, I think, um, don't quote me on the exact number, but somewhere around that per, and RENA cycle runs for eight years, that we should be building these many units. Obviously, we are there advocating that San Ramon has a limit of 96,000 residents in San Ramon, according to a general plan, and that's all we can build. Uh, what we're going out there to regional conferences and meetings and talking about how do we balance the jobs and the housing here? Because we feel that we've been providing housing for the larger Bay Area for a very long time, and we need a balance of bringing jobs in the Tri Valley as well as um, you know as we provide that housing. Um, and the plan, the next 27-year plan that that has been approved again, it is a plan. It is a master plan of what a community will look like, is in downtown. Um, right now, we are, um, and this is a great time to be engaged with the council because. We are in negotiations with the developer on what we call a development agreement. Um, the developer has come um, to in front of Parks Commission, has come in front of uh, the Planning Commission, and they will eventually come in front of City Council to approve um, and work out a development agreement. And development agreements are generally um, put in place so that they can uh, benefit our community as well. And the way we're looking at it is there's almost more than $52 million worth of development agreement that we are negotiating. Um, and we're being very, very thoughtful about how we're negotiating this for all of San Ramon. How are we getting more money for our open spaces? How are we making sure that some of the parks that have been a priority for us for a long time um, get built? How are we making sure there are amenities um, that we are looking for our residents are part of the, this development agreement again, it's a, you know, it's still in negotiations. Um, I don't want to go into too many de details. What I want to really bring up right now is that watch our meet council, uh, watch our commission meetings. They're streamed live on YouTube. Uh, watch our council meetings so that you learn about what goes into really thoughtfully planning for a city uh, while you are, you have all these competing priorities while, you know, these are all the things. So, um, when people are using these issues as election issues, and I've been getting on phone calls and I've been talking to people and explaining exactly how we're coming to these decisions, I get a very positive response. So that's why I wanted to make sure if this is something I talk about during this um, Sunday, um, it's an important topic. It's top of mind for everybody. People don't know a whole lot. <clears throat> you get newspaper headlines, you're probably getting uh, mailers um, and you're questioning what's going on. And I wanna make sure that you're able to reach out to me anytime you have questions about this. Um, my, you know, I'm very transparent with uh, my phone number and email, both on my city website. If you go under council, my website is there. My phone number and email is there. Same with, uh, if you go on my campaign, uh, sabinazafa.org, all that information is there. So I'm very approachable. Um, if I can't answer, I will call you back. If I haven't reached out and because I've been getting a lot of emails, email me again and say, did you miss my email and not respond to it? Um, so I just want to make sure people know that I'm available and I'm approachable. And as a mayor, that's exactly what I want to bring. I want to be available and approachable where I can represent you. I cannot represent you if I'm not available and approachable and you can't tell me everything that's important to you. Um, so, uh, those were some of the things top of mind for me. Um, anybody on uh, the, uh, the panel that has any questions or anything that you've heard and you want to share? Can I just say something, Sabina? Yeah. You, you talked about Rena, and I just want to you know make sure everyone understands that you know cities don't build houses; developers build houses. Cities have to lay out the, the groundwork and the framework to make that available. 
Uh, um, and you know, I, I represent the city of San Ramon on the Contra Costa County Transportation Authority Citizens Advisory Committee. And we are going through a process right now where we're reviewing each city's growth uh, management plans. And long story short, you know, if we, if we as a committee and then ultimately the CCTA don't approve the, the GMP checklist, then cities don't get their 18% in sales tax back. Um, and there's a lot of cities out there struggling uh, with the arena numbers, not just getting them built, but, but finding, you know, appropriate zoning um, to get those, those, to facilitate that building. Um, you know, and we've got conflicting interests, you know, you want to, to protect open space, but you still need to build housing. So, so infill, you know, I've only been in San Ramon for three years. I've lived all over this country because of my job. Um, and, and this is absolutely an amazing, amazing community. Um, and I see an incredible opportunity for the future here. And, you know, something like City Walk and that infill development, it, it's responsible. It's meeting that, it's protecting the open space, keeping, you know, meeting climate goals, the transportation, facilitating getting more jobs here so people aren't commuting out or commuting in and, and that type of thing. So I think it's amazing. Um, I don't know if this is the right time, but I, I did have a question for you. Um, you know, you've obviously been involved in the community for a long time and been an elected official for a couple of years now. So is there something, any misconception, anything you changed your mind on over the last couple of years, having gone from, you know, citizen who's been greatly involved, um, but now as an elected official, you're really being in the heart of it. Is there anything that, that you found different uh, that you changed your mind on? Oh, absolutely. And one, I really appreciate the information you shared. Um, thank you so much. And uh, I thank you for the question. I think development is exactly one of those um, issues, which, you know, as a resident, you're like, okay, how much more are we going to build? Do we want all of this? And then you get elected and you do understand so much more of what's at stake. Uh, what is what is the depth of, um, you know, like you said, some some of the tax dollars associated, as well as the mandates. Is Billy frozen? Um, yeah, I think he is. Yeah, I want to make sure I was answering him as well. <laughs> you know, just maybe he'll come back, and I will. But but I think that's that's you know, I've sat in the shoes of. Um, I will wait for Billy to come back and answer his question for him as well. Oh, he just texted me. He said, I just got kicked off. <laughs> uh, like, you should have asked that question. Come on, Billy. <laughs> I can fill him in. No, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he'll get back on. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, that's another one. Um, our infrastructure, Wi-Fi infrastructure and expanding that because <laughs> that's a struggle. I mean, it happens on every meeting that I'm part of where uh, yeah. you do, you know, lose connection or something. Uh, my best story was that my son was downloading a huge game and I kept getting thrown off city council meetings. And I'm like, wait a second, what is going on here today? What's up with my Wi-Fi? And he's like, oh, I'm just downloading this one game because yeah. I'm going out and it'll download. I'm like, can you stop doing that when I'm on council meetings? Yeah. So we have competing bandwidth priorities in this house. Um, but yeah, to Billy's question, um, development is exactly one of those where... Um, when I wasn't elected, I was questioning it. Um, I was, you know, um, like, how much more do we need to build? How, you know, are we going to build on open spaces? And, and, and as an elected, you understand you're not just your opinion. You have to actually think about the city at large. There he is. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, Billy. Yeah, my internet apparently failed me. Yeah, I, we were just talking about competing priorities for bandwidth seem to be the biggest issue right now. Yeah. Um, and um, so I was just answering your question. You know, one of the things absolutely that I learned um, sitting on council is about development and growth and how do we uh, manage, you know, these competing priorities and as, as council members, how do we separate ourselves from that single resident 
that thinks about, okay, are you going to build in my town? What is it going to look like? To how are we going to think about the entire end-to-end -end picture? So that, you know, that it certainly gives you a big picture. I would say I have learned so much on council. I have changed my minds on so many things. And, and that's not because I changed my mind, but because I have had so much more information and um, to make my decisions. And that's, again, as I sit in this seat, my goal is how do I make sure that I amplify that information as well? Just as I learn, how do I make sure that I just don't keep it within, but actually extend it out and, and help people understand? Because I've been in their shoes, right? When, when you see the headline, when you, you see um, something, somebody, something, the first is a shock factor. Oh, wow. What, what are you talking about? What's going on here? And then you either go out and learn and find out. Um, or you, um, you know, or you just go with the status quo and say, okay, um, I think that you guys are doing something bad. Um, and I've really, I would say, um, learned to work well with my council, council members. Um, I know before the election, we may not all have been on the same page. They may or may not have supported, but for me, that teamwork was very important to get on council and not only learn from their experience, um, but also bring new ideas to them and things which, which I got that, right? Um, a lot of times there were things that were done a certain way. Um, my council had been together for a number of years now. So they had a good mix of, you know, where they understood each other, when, where they knew what they were coming from. Obviously they had the knowledge, but they also had a comfort, um, if you will, um, a comfortable relationship where they understood each other. And so joining that club and uh, you know, really earning their respect and becoming a team member where they really valued the new ideas I was bringing as well and talking about things and even some of the things which they were like, yeah, just because you talked about it, it happened because nobody would listen to us when we wanted to say the same thing. Um, and so I think that's kind of, you know, um, I have um, changed my mind, but I've also changed a few minds on the council as well. And, and that's when, you know, that's when you inject some, some fresh ideas, but fresh ideas doesn't mean that you disrupt things that already exist. Fresh ideas mean, how do you talk about the things which you want to bring and add to the council and support them in a way that you can get the council support? Nothing can, you know, like I said, nothing can pass, whether I wanted the innovation and technology committee, whether I wanted us to communicate more, whether I wanted live meetings, all these things which I was passionate about, I, I would not have gotten the support if my council didn't believe that was important as well. So you gain the, you know, you earn the respect, you, and, and you know, the reason I do talk about my council appointing me vice mayor only after a year being on council, because they saw that, you know, that I was, I had the leadership and I had the partnership. Leadership is again, partnership and teamwork and uh, they trusted me. So I was absolutely humbled. Um, and uh, that's why I talk about it so much is because for them, for me to gain their trust in one year was a big deal for me. Um, and I hope, you know, I gain everybody's trust and they see the same thing that as mayor, um, I will step up to not only gain my council's trust, but people's trust. Not everybody may be happy with me, and it's not about um, a popularity context. It's really making sure that everybody's heard and everybody feels heard, um, and we're able to uh, bring those ideas um, to our city council and, and talk about them. Um, and if it's something, like I said, I have to explain, and you know, just like I have learned, how do I help people learn that, you know, that and amplify it? So. Um, to answer your question, Billy. So, um, Sabina, to, to piggyback on that, unless you have something else you want to address. No, yeah, so for the people watching, I'm Dave Owens. I'm on the Arts Advisory Committee. This is Kevin. He's head of uh, dogs for Sabina. But uh, uh, so, um, you know, the thing I think with like, if you, I'm sure you've experienced this with City Walk. I think if you explain it to someone for five minutes, they actually get it, right? Yeah. Like, and I, even though our meetings are public, I think most people just aren't going to watch a three hour meeting that are busy or, you know, what can this, you know, I think as mayor, but also just as a city and maybe even citizens, like, what can we do to better 
communicate fact, mm -hmm. even if it's like, here's five bu uh, bullet points about what's happening. Cause I just think there's so much misinformation. And I think if you just give people the basics, they kind of get it. They may still have problems, but I, I think most people are reasonable when you give them like, you know, the basic facts. And um, that's a great idea, Dave. And I think um, as we formed, so this, when I got elected, one of my things was communication and the council agreed that we needed to over communicate because that's always been, that's always a challenge. And so in the last two years, um, Steven Spadowski actually gave um, a really great presentation. And I believe it's online on how much our engagement has gone up, but it's never enough, right? Um, we we did not have the same social media presence, the email presence, the, all of that presence even two years ago. And then um, Joe, our city manager, formed a communication and outreach department. So that's been doing great, especially during COVID. But yet we, we, we do miss people who are not paying attention. So um, I think that's one department where we continue to see. And, you know, if you have some ideas, do talk to Sp uh, uh, Steven Spadowski. Um, he is very open to listening and open to ideas. And um, he has really done a great job. Um, we feel lucky that he's also an employee of San Ramon because he's also served on Livermore Council. And so he really comes with that experience of having served on a council and you know, right now um, working for the city of San Ramon. So um, he's always open and welcome to ideas. And if there are other channels which we might be missing, um, you know, I think we'll be very open to that. Um, like you said, maybe, a, you know, five bullet points saying this is what it's all about. Um, something um, just clear, a graphic and things like that, which are coming out uh, would be good. And then point people out to more information. Um, I know this weekend um, I was at the farmer's market and I saw uh, that uh, the developer of Bishop Ranch was at the farmer's market too. Uh, they had flyers and brochures and they were talking about uh, the master plan and what what that plan looks like. So if you do go to the farmer's market, it's a good idea to kind of look at what, what they're presenting as well um, and uh, what they have presented to council. It is one in the hot topics, it is on the website um, if you look for it. But again, I feel like information needs to go out and reach people who, um, who don't have time, who don't want to, you know, um, just like they read the headlines, how do we make sure we also are the headlines? Um, you know, we can, um, so um, I, I like your idea. I will talk to Stephen myself as well, make sure, you know, as these important topics um, come into play, how do we have graphics and, you know, marketing and things like that. Right. Um, and do reach out to him if you've got some ideas as well as to, um, you know, how we can do this. Any other questions, ideas, anything you guys have been doing? How about Halloween? Like, are you, is anybody decorating or? Um, that's, <laughs> that's been a topic. I know we were part of the Arts Foundation where I, the city is doing something to decorate a scarecrow. Yes, yeah, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> yeah, right. So um, yeah, we'll see, you know, it's, um, I see some houses decorated, but there were a few streets in San Ramon which were known for their haunted houses. So yeah. um, I'm gonna go drive by and see, you know, if they're doing something which people could just walk around and see. Um, I hear some, some um, I was with some electeds and some of the cities are doing trunk or treat. And I know we did that in San Ramon as well, where they will just, you know, outside their homes, they'll put candy in the trunks and you know, kids can come and take out. Um, actually, a neighborhood in San Ramon mentioned that they were doing that as well, where they would open the car trunks and um, you can just go and pick out your candy from the trunk instead of going to the door. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's fall is here. Um, we are, you know, as a county, we are in uh, red now. So uh, I'm certainly seeing more people out. San Ramon's done phenomenal. Uh, because everybody's been so careful and I'm very, very appreciative as a community, how well we've done through this pandemic. Um, but now you're, you can actually sit indoors and eat as well. So um, that's, that's interesting. And, you know, we thought when businesses opened, 
people would not go. And I am surprised that, you know, people are there. The, the norm will eventually, and I think once the vaccine comes, we will actually get out of this. Um, so I know we've been in uh, sheltering in place and in our houses for so long um, that people are afraid what's going to, you know, how are things going to go back up? And human beings are very resilient, right? Um, we, we just, um, when everything opens up, I think with the norm, we'll go back to the norm. Um, and um, it might be a new norm. I remember going to Japan six, seven years ago when, you know, a lot of people were wearing masks and um, I was wondering why people are wearing masks. And so apparently during SARS, they went through that. They were hit pretty badly. And so that became a way of life for them. And if everybody would, anybody would get a cold or, um, you know, had um, a flu or something, they would just wear a mask um, in, for respect for other citizens. So, so that, and, you know, somebody near them as they were in trains, you know, their trains are packed. Um, there's a lot of people on their train stations and everything. And so I guess it became a way of life and it may become a way of life that, you know, we wear our masks if we're not feeling well to respect, you know, other people and still go about and do things. So uh, it starts, it, you know, it seems like it's becoming more of a norm where we, along with everything else, we pack our masks uh, in our purses. And I guess, you know, for the fashion industry, it's taken off as well. <laughs> so. Um, but you know, my, my daughter is dying to show you the, <clears throat> she heard talking about Halloween. She's been yeah. constructing this, this mask out of cardboard yeah. and hot glue. <laughs> and can you wear it yet? Or... Put it on. Nice to meet you. Looks great, Madison. <laughs> nice. Turn your head. Turn your head. <laughs> oh, nice. And what is that? I don't want to be guessing, so. Is, what's it going to be? A snake. A snake, she snake. says. <laughs> I like it. She's been on the patio with scissored cardboard and hot glue for days. Yeah. That is so cool. Madison's very creative. So. Yeah, that is very creative. <laughs> Good luck, Madison. I want to see the final picture then. When you when it's all done, I want a picture of you in that costume. She said okay. <laughs> Awesome. Well, I think we're right around 11.30. Thank you so much for joining. It's, um, it's been fun. Um, and, uh, you know, as elected mayor, I we hope to continue these conversations. I know Mayor Bill Clarkson does them on a Friday morning. I may be doing them on a weekend as well, because um, there's a lot of people that have um, time weekend mornings. Um, those of us that do work, Friday mornings are generally not the best. So, um, but, you know, we'll continue to have those breakfasts um, and engage in, you know, the third, uh, third grade um, tours of City Hall. And I mean, personally, for me, it's also important to get um, an internship for our youth um, through the mayor's office. That's that's an important one. Um, we have very smart high school kids and uh, just I learn from them every single day um, and um, getting them involved in civic engagement. And we've, we've seen, right, um, every city, I've seen a young person now running. Um, and, you know, they, they, the fact that they choose to be involved, they, they could just be having, a, you know, fun with their friends and not worry about these things. But the fact that whatever their viewpoints are, the fact that our young people are now involved in our local politics says a lot about where this country is. Um, and, um, so I just want to say I appreciate everybody who's putting in the hard work to run. Um, I hope as you get your ballots, vote Sabina for mayor. It's the very first name um, at, on San Ramon uh, mayor's ballot. Uh, and uh, make sure to sign it um, and drop it in. Um, we have five locations in San Ramon. I have posted them on the website. The city's been um, tweeting, um, posting about it as well. There are three locations, I believe, which are 24 seven. City Hall is not 24 seven. It is during business hours. And I believe there's another indoor location. I'd have to look it up, but uh, we have one uh, by the El Costa Community Center. There's one by Doherty Station Community Center. Um, and I believe the one by the Senior Center is also 24 seven. So um, I will 
post it again on my website. I'll make sure we, you know, uh, people know where to drop their ballots. Um, you can also choose to vote in person. Um, I believe in-person voting is going to start on the Saturday before the election Tuesday, because they do want people to be able to come in if they want to vote in person um, and um, not have all the rush uh, eight, you know, 7.30 p.m. on a Tuesday night. Uh, so the, there's a lot of options these days right now uh, to make sure um, that you are able to vote, you're able to uh, vote at, you know, um, and drop your ballot. So no stamps needed, just sign it. Don't forget to sign it. And, you know, you will get it back uh, if you don't sign it. That's what I'm told by the county. Um, and vote Sabina for the next mayor of San Ramon. Um, thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful rest of the Sunday. Bye. Bye.